Thank you very much for having us today. Our pleasure. I understand uh, where the Harry Daly Museum is currently located here in North Sydney is not the original home of the museum. Can you tell us a little bit about the background of the museum and how it came into being? Yes, the museum started uh, with a private collection by a very eminent anaesthetist called Harry Daly uh, here in Sydney, uh, way back in the 1920s. Um, he continued to collect uh, way through the 1950s. Uh, the collection was supplemented by donations from um, various members of the profession as well. Um, he originally put most of the collection uh, into the Department of Anesthesia at St Vincent's Hospital. Uh, when it started to outgrow that, uh, Commonwealth Industrial Gases, uh, CIG, took it on uh, for housing. Uh, and eventually it moved to Prince Alfred Hospital. Uh, when the building that was in there was being demolished, the Australian Society of Anaesthetists took it over in 1990. Um, and uh, since about 1996 it's been under the care of one of the society's committees called HALMA. Uh, we uh, originally had it housed in the headquarters at Edgecliff. Uh, which were small quarters um, and uh, then in it did expand a little bit there open to the public in about 2008 uh, but then the society moved to the North Sydney quarters uh, in 2013 and it's taken a while to get it up and running and rehouse everything redisplay everything so hopefully we'll be open to the public and any, anybody else who wants to visit from now on. Obviously a museum about science and the practice of anaesthesia is quite unique. Where did the majority of the collection actually come from and what periods and uh, have you ever received donations from the general public? The primary collection is based on what uh, Harry Daly collected in the 1920s onwards and subsequent to his donation we've had donations from other anaesthetists as we retire from the public and from institutions who have got uh, equipment that is spare and this is gradually built up the collection so now it's, it's a pretty comprehensive collection that covers most of the major periods of anaesthesia development. What are the main challenges your museum faces in the future? I think probably the main challenge is one of space. We have a huge collection of over 2,000 items, um, but we do have a limitation in what we can display. Uh, we can um, rotate, and we do rotate our display, but it would be nice to have as much as possible uh, out on display. Some of the items we have, as you can see from behind me, are rather bulky, and we do need a lot more floor space for those sort of items. Uh, we would like to have an interactive display, uh, particularly with an anaesthetic machine, like to, for the public to come and practice giving each other an anaesthetic, uh, or pretend so. Uh, we need space. Who actually visits your museum and how do they generally react when they come here? The museum is mainly visited by anaesthetists and uh, the general public. Uh, but the primary visitors are anaesthetists and the collections designed to appeal to anaesthetists who may have used equipment or know about the equipment that is on display. However, the public can also find a lot of interest in the museum. There are items that are older and predate modern anaesthesia. The items that relate to surgery or anaesthesia that patients may have, people may have experienced, so they may relate to some items. Um, so we would like to encourage the public to visit the museum as well. Um, well, we've set out the museum uh, in, on the basis of a timeline so that we start up here with pre-anaesthetic or pre-modern anaesthesia items uh, that would, be, would have been used in experimentation and uh, very early medicine. Uh, we progressed through to the more modern era where it started in the 1840s, um, right through uh, until the modern era as we go down the, the cabinets, uh, we do have 
uh, separate cabinets that are uniquely devoted to anything that was developed by Australians. Um, and we also have a section uh, that is devoted to anaesthesia in wartime um, with quite interesting uh, instruments in there, a few surgical instruments as well as uh, the anaesthetic ones. Um, we have a section on paediatrics for children and we and on um, obstetrics as well. Uh, we've tried to incorporate as much as uh, the globe as we can but we need more space. <laughs>